Today, the Supreme Court agreed to hear a case that could decide future access to a pill used in more than half of abortions in this country, Mifepristone. Anti-abortion activists have been seeking to limit its use, if not take it off the market completely. And now the Supreme Court is going to decide whether Mifepristone will still be accessible via telemedicine and through the mail up to 10 weeks of pregnancy. Or whether pregnant women, many of whom now live in abortion deserts, will have their access to the pill cut off at seven weeks of pregnancy and are required to have several in-person doctor visits to obtain a prescription. The high court now finds itself in the awkward position of ruling on abortion 18 months after it decided that the matter should be left to the states. Oral arguments are expected early next year and the justices could rule by the end of June. Joining me now is Irene Carmone, senior correspondent for New York Magazine. Thank you for being back here. I mean, it's like whiplash every other day. There's some sort of heinous infringement on reproductive rights. And now the high court is taking up Mifepristone. First, let's talk, Erin, about sort of what these re potentially newly reimposed restrictions could mean for people seeking access to abortion, right? The Mifepristone available only until seven weeks of pregnancy seems meaningful. Right. And who can prescribe it? Yep. And the w the manner in which it can be prescribed. Telemedicine so, or by mail. Exactly. I, I I think the big picture here. Of course, this is an administrative law case. But before you fall asleep, anyone watching this, this is about a blue state abortion ban. The dear wish of the people who concocted this case out of whole cloth have invented standing. These are anti-abortion doctors who have brought the case, despite the fact that they do not ever prescribe this pill and they can't find any kind of harm to people who have accessed the pill. They are doing so because they understand that this pill, uh, the more you restrict it, the more you, you, or let's put it this way, this pill represents freedom, it yeah. represents privacy. In states where abortion is restricted, people have been able to say, drive right across the border, get this pill from a mobile clinic, from a truck, uh, through the mail to a P.O. box. They understand that abortions have actually gone up since Dobbs, because of increased access. And ah. a huge part of that is that the privacy, um, the, the quickness, the lack of multiple visits uh, that is represented by this highly safe drug. Mifepristone. And the, and, yes, Mifepristone and misoprostol taken in combination. And so they understand that what they need to be doing is restricting in places like here in New York, California, New Mexico, Colorado, that have become havens for people living in abortion restrictive states. Wow. And so. What they really wanted to do, and this is so crazy, is get a time machine, go back to 2000, yes. and say that, that all of uh, the approval of this pill, which again, 24 years almost ago, uh, should be undone. Now, the big thing that happened today is the Supreme Court saying, okay, that is too crazy. Right, we're for not us. going back to the original approval of this drug it, back they, in 2000. They would dearly love for that to happen. And if they could, they could take away more, the option that more than half of abortion patients prefer. Yeah. Um, so it if they take this halfway step where like the Fifth Circuit tried to kind of have it both ways, is it based in science? Is it based in what's safe? Is it based in process? Does, does not appear to be the case. So the question is, is the Supreme Court coming in to say, okay, this is absurd, or yep. is it coming in to say, let's make up yet another compromise and call ourselves so moderate on this issue? Right, the compromise being roll back the regulations to what they were in 2015. That are working just fine. Right, there and which no would have issues. profound effects because in 2015, there were not abortion deserts across the United right. States. Mifepristone wasn't as important as or critical as it is today. And Alex, there's been a whole body of research in recent years about uh, do people understand how to take this safely? Can they do telemedicine in order to find out where they are in their pregnancy, whether they're contraindicated? A large body of research has been built up to show that this is very safe for people to take in these ways. So not only is there the need, there's also the demonstrated realization that this is a safe option. And, and it's a safe option for people who are getting it legally and also people who are forced to take matters into their own hands. Uh, when you look at the court and what it did in Dobbs, I think a lot of people are considerably worried about how they might rule on this. They're taking up the issue of standing, though, which, I mean, how, what, how do you interpret the, the, the sort of way in which the court is, is saying it's going to rule on this? Well, to be fair to the court, I mean, typically, if you, if you say the Supreme Court is going to take an abortion case, you want to crawl under this table. But the Fifth Circuit did create this situation that the Supreme Court didn't allow to go into effect that would have limited it. Yeah. So it's actually kind of good news for the Supreme Court to take this up if they choose. Were they not to take it up, then those restrictions would go into effect. Should they choose to unroll those, 
to, to undo the Fifth Circuit's opinion. But what's also good news is that they have not even taken seriously what the conservative Christian soldier of the district court did, which was to take at face value that the entire approval of this drug should be undone. So there is a chance that this is kind of conditionally good news. Um, the standing question of like these, these, these doctors- Anti-abortion activists. Do not, cannot show that there's any harm to them, cannot show that they in any way deal with mifepristone, cannot show harm to their patients either. Um, but it may be necessary for them to come in and say, look, we're not going to talk about the standing issue, but we are going to say whether the Fifth Circuit was right or not. And at least they have not put the entire approval of the drug on the table. And I think it's a sign, you know, the Supreme Court went so far by going even further than what they were initially asked to do to yep. overturn Roe v. Wade. And, and it may be that even they realize that this blowback is something that they now need to kind of moderate a little bit, even on this issue.